Thanks for joining us on The Road Home to You, a podcast where we talk about what it means to be a broken, messy Christian in a broken, messy world. We understand that living a life of faith is hard to do, and sometimes even hard to understand. So let's talk about it. Grab your road trip snacks and a buddy, buckle up, and let's head on down that long road home. Hi, welcome to The Road Home to You. I'm Brandy Gable. And I'm Matt Gable. It is a delight to be with you today. This, As always. This new, almost new year day. Almost New Year's. Almost. We're <laughs> actually recording this on the Sunday before New Year's, mm-hmm. which is the 29th, I think. You know, I saw a meme about how like from December 1st through the 26th is just all like festive and stuff and then from like january 26th to new year's eve is just absolute confusion like nobody knows what day it is nobody knows what time it is like we're all just kind of wandering around like crazy people in Mm -hmm. that weird limbo yeah 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 it is it is very much the time in between times (laughs) yes yes that is a funny way of saying it but i like that yeah So, hi, Matt. Hello. How are you? I'm, you know, getting over being sick. Yes. Uh, I still have some symptoms, but doing okay. Well, you sound a little... Yeah. Funny. Right. But that's okay. We'll just... All all audio problems, we're going to blame on Matt today. Hey, that sounds like a good plan, (laughs) actually. And I will just say, I'm sorry, I was sick. There you go. There we go. (laughs) Well, so, okay, here we are, getting ready for the new year. Yes. 2020. Oh, my goodness. Like, remember when we were little kids? hmm Like, back in 1980. Right. Right? And, because, like, at that point, we were old enough to know, like, there's a new year, there's new stuff, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever. If somebody would have said that you were going to be alive in 2020, I would have thought they were absolutely insane. <laughs> That's so far away. Well, and it, like 2020, like sounded so space agey and right. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, no, we're not space agey. No, entirely. Right. There's some stuff that is definitely beyond what we would have imagined in 1980. I mean, yes. But it's not. It's never the stuff that you expect. You know. No, because we we're supposed to have flying cars by now. Right. Rocket packs and mm-hmm. flying cars and all of that good stuff. Yeah. We don't have any of that good stuff. No. We're supposed to have floating skateboards. Yes. Yes. I want me a floating skateboard. I think those are I called hoverboards, you. right? Yeah. Yeah. Hoverboard. <laughs> I want a hoverboard. I mean, technically they have them, but they're not actually floaty. Well, no, there is one that's floaty, but the amount of energy and work it takes to make it floaty is ridiculous because it takes super conducting, uh, super conducting magnets mm. and uh, they have to be chilled to uh, near absolute zero. And yeah, it's just that's very complicated. It's ridiculous. Yes. But they did it. Well, that is no back to the future I want to see. Right. <laughs> right. Well, that's not what we're talking about today. We're not talking about the things that we thought were going to happen by 2020. No, although that is rather amusing. It, I mean, yes, for sure, for sure. Uh, but what I wanted to sit down and talk with you about today mm-hmm. is, well, three things. Ooh. I want to kind of look back at the year that we've had by talking about like our favorite episodes, things we've learned, whatever, and then take some time to kind of look forward a little bit. So- That being said, what do you think, like when you think back to the episodes that we've done this year, what was your favorite one? Well, it's really difficult because there's an episode that I enjoyed recording the most, and then there's an episode that just seems to continue to come up either in conversation or what have you, the subject matter just continues to seem relevant and and pressing. And what one is that? Okay, so the one I enjoyed recording the most was probably our episode 
where we sat down and talked with Greg Chastain. Ah, yes. That was just so fun and and easy because he's been a good friend of ours for many years. And so it just it was just so easy and fun to sit down and talk with him. Right. And and in that episode we talked about the quote unquote difference between Old Testament God and New Testament Jesus. And mm-hmm. if if Jesus is love, then why is God so mean? And I'll have links to all of the shows that we reference um in our show notes as well. Yeah. So the episode that I feel like continues to come up and continues to feel relevant to me was the episode where we talked about uh, the false dichotomy. And really, that was all about just because an idea seems to come from the opposite ideology politically doesn't necessarily mean that it's the opposite biblically. Essentially saying that not all the ideas of, say, Democrats or the liberal side of things, which tends to be opposite of where most Christians land, not all of those ideas are necessarily wrong or anti-biblical. Right. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of them that have tons of biblical support and precedence. And really, biblically, neither one of the political parties matches up very well biblically. So a Christian, if they're really following the Word of God and really looking into it, uh, you can't solidly land in one party or the other. And you, you know, um, it, it really makes it uh, difficult. And our society, our culture, um, our political system, it all wants to push you to one side or the other. And as Christians, we don't really fit nicely in either of those sides. Yeah. And it's so easy to become trapped in the world's trap of, of trying to make you choose one of those sides. And, and really neither one of them uh, is going to adequately represent a Christian viewpoint. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's very true. And that has come up in conversation a lot, just even between you and I, you know, after we're watching the news or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, as we've interacted with, friends and and family and staff. And it seems to just stay fresh in my mind. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was recently talking about maybe doing a sermon at church at some point and you know, I was thinking, okay, now what are the talks that I could just sort of deliver without too much preparation? And talking about that is that subject is one of the ones that I feel like, okay, mm-hmm. I could just pick up that and run with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think for me, my favorite episode was really early on in the year, Mm -hmm. and it was my favorite episode for a couple of different reasons. And it's interesting because yesterday, this isn't the episode I would have said, (laughs) but my interview that I had with my friend, Crystalyn, about Mm -hmm. domestic abuse was my favorite one. And the reason why is one, because I love Crystalyn and I love just sitting down and chatting with her. And honestly, we haven't chatted since that conversation. Hmm. I mean, like, you know, face to face, person to person. And um, that needs to be remedied. Uh, (laughs) Mm -hmm. But then it was also my favorite because it really opened my eyes to a, a world that I have no firsthand experience in. I've mm-hmm. never lived in a domestically abusive situation. I don't know what that looks like and I don't know how to spot it. And I don't know even, you know, that I should spot it or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And so it opened my eyes to a reality that many, many people live in. And it started to kind of draw back the curtain for me as to what I feel like God has been calling me to step into for the past many, many years. And I was telling a friend this morning at church how, you know, I've been asking this question for years and years and years, God, what do you want me to be when I grow up? What am I supposed to be when I grow up? And I feel like God gave to me several years ago, uh, I think it's Second Corinthians 5.17, where Paul is saying we're to be ministers of reconciliation. And I felt like God had given me that passage and, and really like, you know, laid that on my heart. But then I was like, okay, but what am I supposed to be when I grow up? And I was still asking that question. And then with, with that conversation with Crystalline, that started to pull out 
the understanding that I needed of what does it mean to be a minister of reconciliation. So then that conversation, and then um, I had a conversation with my sister-in-law, Lisa, about infertility and miscarriage and stillbirth. And then I had a conversation with my friend, Steve Austin, about suicide and uh, depression and anxiety and PTSD. And you and I've talked about grief and all of these things. And I'm like, this is what it means to be a minister of reconciliation, is to open up compassion and to embrace broken people Mm -hmm. in their place of brokenness and to love them the way Jesus loves them and to introduce them to Jesus in, in a practical, compassionate way and to just step into their pain with them, you know, and we're told several times to carry one another's burdens. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's part of it. So, I would say crystal and just because it, it really kind of got that ball rolling. So mm-hmm. that was a good episode. We've had a lot of good conversations. Yeah. This year, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Not all of them recorded, unfortunately, but. <laughs> Imagine if we recorded every conversation, every good conversation we ever had. Well, that would just be dangerous. Oh my goodness sakes. We could, I wouldn't ever have to record another episode again. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so what is something that you've maybe learned this past year? Well, trying to, you know, make a concise statement of something that I've learned, that's difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say I've learned a lot of good things through the Genesis process that we've been going through with uh, some other couples from church. Mm -hmm. That has been a hugely rewarding experience, and I would highly recommend it to to anybody if you get a chance. Um, But it's also... Not necessarily for the faint of heart. It's not. It's not the easiest thing to do, but man, if you stick it out and do the hard work, it's it's really rewarding. And uh, some of the things that I've learned through that, and then the subsequent conversations that we've had because of the work in Genesis, I think have continued to to bear fruit in in our relationship and provide us insight into what it was that drew us together because you know we've we've talked about the early days of our relationship and how there was just a something there mm-hmm. and and it wasn't just a, a physical thing i mean sure that was that was there but it wasn't just a physical infatuation there was a, a deep connection that we had real early on but we didn't we didn't have the vocabulary or the understanding to know what that was. And the insights that we've gained through the Genesis process, I think, have really helped us understand some of what that core attraction, that core sameness uh, connection that you and I had early on and continues to be there and has only gotten stronger. Um, And so I think that has been one of the, the more interesting things to see take shape. Yeah. And I'll link that show too, because I did um, an interview with my recovery mentor, Kathy Rodriguez, who Mm -hmm. walked me through the Genesis process 10 years ago, eight years ago. And she and I talked quite a bit about Genesis. So I'll, I'll link that show in it as well. And yeah. So if, if you don't know, uh, we're, Matt and I are each facilitating a Genesis group for uh, some people at our church. And of course, this is my second time going through it and Matt's first time. So um, it's been a a learning process for both of us, mm-hmm. but probably more so even for you since since it's all new to you. <laughs> but, right. So. Yeah. I think the thing that I've learned outside of what I just shared in conjunction with my favorite episode, which is maybe the biggest thing that that I've kind of learned about myself this year. But the other thing that I've really learned is it kind of goes along the same as what you were talking about, but it has more to do with exploring the Enneagram and learning about the Enneagram system 
And for those of you that aren't familiar with Enneagram, we'll put some links in show notes about that as well. Uh, We haven't done an episode on that yet, but I'm hoping to in the future uh, bring in an Enneagram teacher. I think that would be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. The Enneagram is a, eh, we're just going to simplify it very basically and say it's kind of a personality distinguisher. That's not really a good encapsulation of it, but it kind of walks you through what are your motivations for for the behavior that you have and and how can you walk out a healthier way of life and a healthier way of dealing with things and it really for me kind of works in conjunction with the genesis process and anyway all this is to say that i've i've been learning that i am a broken screwed up flawed person which i knew that already But I think for so long, I've been trying to kind of fight against that and really like, I don't know, push back against my own weaknesses. And instead, I'm learning to I just identify them Mm -hmm. and and then move on. Like I can identify, oh, this is a shortcoming that I have. This is this is a flaw in my thinking. This is something that goes clear back to my limbic system from when I was a small child. Mm-hmm. And and there's a wound there that is causing me in this moment as a middle-aged woman to react a certain way. And and that's okay. But I need to acknowledge that in order to to change that. And mm-hmm. and instead of fighting against it, I feel like I'm embracing it more as a you know, We're all just broken and screwed up Mm -hmm. and we're all on this path to, you know, understanding not only who we are, but who God designed us to be and who God sees us as through the lens of Jesus. And I think that's the bigger thing is that as much as I try to fight with myself about all of my flaws and failures and all of that stuff, like that is not Mm -hmm. how God sees me because Jesus died on a cross and set me free from my sin. And there's... Um... Hey, sorry about that. We just had a great big pause because Matt had a big cough. And, uh, and I lost my train of thought in the process of it all. So anyway... What I was saying is what I was saying, and that's what I meant to say. The end. (laughs) (laughs) And the sad thing is there was something I was going to say in conjunction with it, and and that's largely (laughs) gone now, too. Isn't it fun to record when you're sick? Oh, man. (laughs) It's the best. Yeah. (laughs) The life of a podcaster. It's just never dull. (laughs) Um. So anyway, I, yeah, it's it's been a good it's been a good year. What what are you looking forward to in 2020? Like personally, what are, is there anything that I d- didn't forewarn you that I was going to ask this right. question? But <laughs> well, there's a couple of things. Uh, one, we're trying to work out a family trip that will be important for a a, a few reasons. My parents' 50th wedding anniversary is coming up. And it will be our 25th. Yes. And it's kind of a big deal. It is kind of a big deal. Yeah. It will also be the first year that our daughter will be done with school. Mm-hmm. And our son has been done with school for a while. And so, you know, I'm really looking forward to the demands on our time kind of dropping off. In that regard, uh, there's always going to be plenty of things to keep us busy, I'm sure. <laughs> but if we're not acting as uh, taxi drivers for our daughter, you know, <laughs> it, it might free us up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm excited to see what happens uh, with our kiddos this year. Mm-hmm. It'll be neat. I'm, you know what I'm looking forward to? Hmm. Okay. So this entire time we've recorded this show. Mm hmm. I have mentioned on several occasions the struggle that I have with being regular about my Bible reading and prayer time. Right. And how I just, I struggle with consistency and discipline. 
So I tend to be a list person. I like to have lists and I like to have planners and I like calendars and all that good stuff. And in years past, I've tried to do what's called a bullet journal. And it's just like an artistic way to journal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't have to be artistic, but a lot of people make it all pretty and artistic. And I've tried doing that and that didn't work for me. And But then I decided, you know what I need to do? Here's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a, like a faith bullet journal. And I'm going to be logging my Bible reading and prayer requests and gratitude and answers to prayer and sermon notes because I take sermon notes pretty regularly mm -hmm. every Sunday. And, you do. And so I'm going to just keep track of all of these things in one journal. And I'm pretty well done getting it set up right now. And I'm just I'm looking forward to having what I think is going to be a system that will help me visually stay on track and kind of encourage me to to keep up with things. And I've been doing an inductive study on First Peter and that's been good, but over the holidays I honestly haven't done it, but um so I'm just really trying to be in the word more. And mm -hmm. and that's what I'm looking forward to is is spending more time really uh studying what the Bible says because it's not just what the Bible says in some weird generic kind of way. It's, this is what God says to me about his people and about himself and about eternity. And I need to know that. So yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I've been thinking about, uh, and I've been thinking about this for a while. I've been thinking about something somewhat similar to the bullet journal that you're talking about, but I want to spend some time in the Psalms mm. and I want to get them almost do like a database kind of thing and, you know, have them listed out. Okay. This Psalm, this Psalm deals with these subject matters and here are the key verses and whatnot. And so, you know, if say we're doing an episode or I'm doing a talk at church or something, and I'm, you know, going to touch on a certain subject, I'll know where to go in the Psalms to, to pull something out. Because Psalms just, it covers a little bit of everything. Yeah. So no matter what subject you're going to cover, you can find a Psalms that is, or one of the Psalms that is going to address that. Yeah, that's the great thing about David. I mean, he wasn't the only psalmist I know, but he did write the majority of the psalms. And I mean, talk about a guy who kind of covered all of the, you know, that entire gamut mm -hmm. of spiritual mental health. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. like he he swung from both ends. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so he's very relatable, even though he was a king and a shepherd. Yeah. He was really so like any one of us mm -hmm. you know you can find yourself in in his pain or in his praise just constantly you can you can see how it relates to your current situation yeah it's good stuff mm -hmm. all right so now let's move into a new topic and all that right. is the podcast yes so here's the thing we have got some things happening that are, and we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. that are making recording together kind of a difficult thing. Yeah. Um, and your schedule, we're thinking, is not maybe going to get any easier here in the next few months. Things might, who knows? Everything's up yeah. in the air with the schedule. Yeah, everything's up in the air. I've got a bunch of projects at church going on. Brandy has a lot of things going on. And so, you know, it has been difficult even to just schedule time for the two of us to sit down and find time to record. Yeah. Let alone sit down and plan things out and do the research and whatnot right. from that. Yeah. So that as well as the fact that because of the topics that I was talking about as being like my favorite episodes for the year, um, I feel like. I really am wanting to move into the direction with this podcast of taking it more from kind of this general theme 
and really, really focusing more in spiritual and mental health mm-hmm. and, and kind of the, the merging of those two things. I want to be a, a mental health advocate mm-hmm. in conjunction with a, a faith builder. And I have this incredible access to an amazing amount of people who have walked through just so many different things, difficult, painful, horrible things that I will never experience and haven't yet experienced. And they've, they've walked through it and they've struggled through it and, and they've met Jesus through it and, and God has carried them through it and, you know, all those things. So anyway, I, w- I want to take the podcast and I want to move it towards that conjunction of conjunction junction mm-hmm. of, of mental health and, and spiritual wellness. Mm-hmm. So, so the road home to you is going to be changing a little bit. Kind of our branding is going to change a bit. Our, um, the way we do things is going to change a little bit because kind of your, your mission focus. Yes. Yes. Right. And it's, it's going to mean that you're stepping back from it somewhat, not because the, the mission isn't in line with you or whatever, but more because of your schedule. So, well, but that is part of it too. Uh, you know, I mean, I only, I've, I've got minimal experience with some of the things that you're going to want to be dealing with. Mm -hmm. And in order for me to get caught up or up to speed to talk somewhat intelligently on, on those subjects, it would require a fair amount of research that honestly, I'm just not going to have time for. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's important to hear from people who have actually been in those shoes. I think Mm -hmm. that's the beautiful thing about interviewing Crystalyn and Steve and Lisa is because they've walked in those paths of dark, dark places and, Mm -hmm. and have lived to tell the tale about it and can reflect back and say, this is where Jesus met me. And this is how we got through. Yeah. I mean, you and I could sit down and talk about domestic abuse all we want, but it's going to mean very little coming from us, uh, you know, if we don't have somebody who can actually address it as a survivor. Mm -hmm. So we're heading kind of in a new direction. Yeah. And it's going to be much more interview based uh, and less you and I, though you will still come join me on the show every now and again. Mm -hmm. I do still want to talk about because we had started something called that we were calling our disillusionment series. Right. And I still want to talk about that because I think that there's still a good a good merging of faith and mental health in that whole topic of disillusionment. Mm -hmm. Um, So, so I still want to work on that, but what this means is I need to take some time off from producing new shows every single week for at least a month um, so that I can really focus in on getting some stuff done behind the scenes recording some interviews with people, which takes time to set them up and, mm-hmm. you know, all of that and really begin that process of, of flipping over the kind of the branding, I guess, of our podcast. Right. So, uh, so what that means is for the next at least month, what I'm going to do is I'll continue to put out the, the Psalms episodes, but that will be every week. So it's just going to be like a little you know, one of our little rest stops with some Psalms in there every single week for the next at least month. And hopefully it won't be longer than that. I'm really hoping to start back in full swing in February is my goal. Uh, but I will I will keep you guys posted if that changes because I don't want to just leave you in the lurch. And I know like we have some Patreon supporters and you guys, here's the thing. I get it if you feel like I don't want to keep up with my Patreon support you know, while we're under construction here. Yeah. Um, totally understandable. It's understandable, but I, but you know, we are trying to make go of this and, um, and we appreciate and value your support so much. So if you're able to keep it up, man, that would mean the world to us. If you're not able to, by all means, that's fine. You're still a friend and we still love you. (laughs) Um, anyway, I just, I'm, I'm really excited about the changes that I see ahead and the direction that things are going to be going and uh, some of the people that I'm going to have on the show and all of those things. I think it's going to be a really good thing. I think that people are still going to just get a lot out of it. I know one of the things that people talk about that they really like about our show is the banter kind of between you and I, the chemistry between Mm -hmm. you and I. And, and I really don't 
I want that to still be here. So so you can't go away forever. Well, yes, and I won't be. <laughs> okay. I I enjoy that too. I enjoy our time together and it, it's it's so much fun to just sit down and have these conversations and mm-hmm. and to be able to share them with other people. And it's really what started the podcast in the beginning. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to forget that. Yeah. But I also don't want to I want to move forward. Mm-hmm. So So I think that's it. I think so. I think we've uh, hit everything that you just really needed to to talk about and to get out there. And yeah, we looked backwards. We looked forwards. We looked a little bit off to the side. (laughs) You know, it's all good. Can you believe? Wow, twenty twenty. I know. It's It's so weird. It is so weird. It's it is. It feels a bit like a milestone kind of moment it does it really does it's um i don't know it's kind of exciting it's kind of like when we switched to from 1999 to 2000 Mm -hmm. it's like that like wow that it's like that this is only going to happen one time in a lifetime Mm -hmm. of course it is because you know it always is only once in a lifetime but it feels monumental (laughs) i don't Mm -hmm. know yeah. Well, and there's there's so much in turmoil right now. Ugh, and yeah. there's yeah, and, and it sort of feels like the outcome of some of the events that we're dealing with right now is going to potentially shape our world for some time. Yeah. There is a lot going on and you guys listen, if you're not news minded, I don't want you to watch the news and make yourself crazy with it. Because that's not good for for anybody. Right. But also don't bury your head in the sand. Like pay attention to what's going on because this this is an important time in our in our nation's history. And mm-hmm. I think that we have an obligation to be a, an active part of it. We've been given this incredible freedom to voice our beliefs and our concerns and our, you know, we've got to vote. How mm-hmm. amazing is that? And And we need to make our voices heard. And I think we need to do that as well-informed citizens of our nation. So, hey, and if you're not an American and you're listening to this, you should still stay informed (laughs) for your own world. I don't know. (laughs) As much as you're able. Yes. Uh, So, okay, cool. I think that's it. If you would like to see show notes, well, here's the thing. On your podcast player, there's going to be show notes that will direct you to further show notes over at roadhometoyou.com. And you can find all of our links to social media. You can find other links to other shows. You can find our email, all those good things. But if you would like to just email us, you can do that at roadhometoyou at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, I'll have links to every show that we mentioned, all of our previous episodes. Uh, I'll put a link in there to some Enneagram information too, if anybody's interested in that. And um, my goodness sakes, I think that will do it. All hey, right. happy, 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 happy New Year. I don't know why I said that so many times. You just really wanted it to be happy. <laughs> I just really did. It is the start of the year. You may as well start on a hopeful note. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, you guys, as we walk into 2020, love God, love people, pray hard, and we'll see you just around the corner. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.